Do we know much about the goats we are familiar with? Well, yes, this is horned, eternally bleeding animal gives milk, fluff, and maybe some eat it, many of us will say. However, there are many breeds that some have never even heard of. Their homeland is Pakistan, and they can also be found in Arab countries on the territory of India, Afghanistan, and Tajikistan. Gulabi is an incredibly beautiful, graceful animal with white fur. Slim build, elongated thin neck, head with a Roman profile, expressively lively eyes, and long droopy ears. Very long ears that hang down to the knees are impressive. They are soft, wide, and thin. They appeared in goats for a reason. In their homeland, expressive ears help regulate heat exchange, preventing the body from overheating. The breed got its name because of its pink skin color. Gulabi translates as pink. These are high-legged animals. The height at the withers in goats is up to 110 centimeters with a weight of 90 kilograms, and in goats, up to 130 centimeters with a live weight of up to 130 kilograms. Goats have a thick coat, which makes them frost-resistant and hardy at low temperatures. Gulabi are also very appreciated for their delicious and nutritious milk. These goats are very intelligent and affectionate, and quickly become attached to their owner. They immediately recognize their owner, and sometimes behave like dogs, completely copying their behavior. They follow along the site, sleep near the door of the house, waiting for the appearance of a person. Have you ever looked into the eyes of a goat? Goats have a very unusual pupil shape. Due to the rectangular elongated shape of the pupil, the goat has a viewing angle of almost 340 degrees, depending on the lighting. They change from a narrow slit to a rectangle and even a square. It is this pupil and the special position of the eyes that allows even the most careless goat to notice a predator sneaking up from behind. And all this, mind you, without turning their head. The Italian breed of Girgintana goats traces its ancestry back to southern Italy. Her long horns, like a giant corkscrew, make this breed of goats uniquely original. Just imagine, the horns of an adult goat can reach a length of as much as 70 centimeters. However, the roots of this breed go far beyond Europe, towards high-altitude Afghanistan. According to some sources, the ancestors of Gurgitan goats are wild screw-horned goats. It was from them that they inherited their amazing horns. The ancestors of Gurgitan goats were probably brought to Sicily by the Arabs, who invaded its borders in 827. Gurgitan goats with impressive horns and a medium-sized white long-haired fur coat up to 85 centimeters high at the withers and weighing up to 65 kilograms. Looking at Gurgantan's funny goat, you involuntarily think about how impressive the fantasy of nature can be. Kashmiri goats live in the highlands of Central Asia and Tibet, in the mountainous regions of Mongolia, Iran, as well as in northern India, at an altitude of up to 5,000 meters above sea level, in a harsh climate and sudden temperature changes from negative 40 degrees to plus 40 degrees. To protect against the harsh climate, nature has awarded these animals with an amazing, unusually soft, and very valuable down, which protects the goats from rain, cold, and heat. It is a small, slender animal, about one and a half meters long and 60 centimeters high. The trunks of Kashmiri goats are covered with a long guard hair with a thin and soft downy undercoat. In the textile industry, only their valuable down is used. For many centuries, the down of Kashmiri goats has remained the most expensive natural raw material of all known varieties of wool. The high cost is explained by the fact that an average of only 120 grams of fluff is extracted from one individual. In addition, goats of this breed cannot be bred with the preservation of wool properties anywhere outside the listed territories, since with climate change, they quickly lose their properties. The down of Kashmiri goats and the products is the height of bliss. Let it be expensive, but the absence of allergies to it, extraordinary softness, 
lightness, and comfort are finding more and more fans all over the world every day. All goats are good, and which goat do you like the best? Can't choose? Look further to find the goat of your dreams. A very interesting breed, the Boer, was bred in South Africa at the very beginning of the 20th century. You can easily determine the breed by the color of the hair on the head. They have a brown color. This is their characteristic feature. The rest of the body is white. Males have thick horns on their heads that curve backwards. These goats are a dream legend for every goat breeder. A kind of cult, really. The reason for such popularity is the size of such individuals. In addition, the Boers are very beautiful and look like something exotic and enticing. In fact, Boers are large, massive, and very spectacular animals. The largest breed of domestic goats. The body weights of goats of this species can reach up to 95 kilograms, and adult goats often weigh more than 130 kilograms. Exhibition samples often weigh more, but that's why they're on exhibit. Boer females have a calm disposition, but the goats, they're wayward. They are agile and very strong. Sometimes they're aggressive. Some of the special features of Boer goats, rapid growth and high fertility, unpretentiousness and maintenance, good adaptability to climate conditions, in particular to a hot climate, explain why this species is definitely one of the best. Kamori are goats that are widely known for their beautiful and unique appearance. They have an amazing color, reminiscent of Arabic script. The homeland of this breed is animals in Pakistan. There, they are highly appreciated for their unpretentiousness in nutrition, good heat tolerance, for the taste of milk, as well as for the special coloring of the wool. The Kamori has red, brown, white or black spots of unusual shape on a monophonic basis in which there is a similarity with Arabic script. Kamori goats are very similar in appearance to other Pakistani goats. They are characterized by long drooping ears and a hooked nose. The length of the ears can reach 45 centimeters. A goat is one and a half to two times larger than goats. Kamori goats grow more than a meter. There are also representatives of the species who are as tall as an adult. Kamori are resistant to a bad environment and are a source of livelihood for many residents of Pakistan. These goats look like sheep, but are not even their close relatives. These are Angora goats. Their unique wool is the reason they look like sheep. The body is entirely covered with a shiny hair covering, which consists of pleasant to the touch, long, curly or wavy strands. A healthy Angora goat has soft wool falling in soft curls, which is quite beautiful to look at. The homeland of Angora goats is a mountainous area of sunny Turkey. The animals got their name in honor of the modern city of Ankara, known in ancient times as Angora. Adult Angora goats weigh 45 to 50 kilograms and, in addition to the wool, flaunt luxurious horns. The growth of goats can be up to 75 centimeters. The Angora goat with a weight of 30 to 35 kilograms and a height of up to 66 centimeters cannot boast of such a luxurious decoration. Her horns are small and thin. The main color of Angora is white, Goats with gray, black, and silver color are less common. But the main advantage of animals is their wool. Angora goats are the main wool breed of goats, giving the so-called mohair. On the farm, these goats are sheared twice a year, receiving up to six kilograms of wool from a goat, and three to five from a goat. Then mohair yarn is obtained from this wool, which can be turned into many different warm things such as hats, scarves, mittens, and socks. Dutch Landris. You will be stunned just by looking at this ferocious goat. It has long, hard horns and a shaggy, thick coat that easily scares people and other animals. Dutch Landris goats are sturdy, medium-sized animals 
mostly horned, with short legs and long hair. This breed is originally from the Netherlands. Goats are really very aggressive and can attack their owner without hesitation. And goats can also be used as a horse-drawn transport. A trained goat can pull a cart with a load of 500 kilograms. Haven't you heard? That's fine. In 1958, the Dutch Landris breed almost disappeared, having been reduced to two animals. Since 1999, the number of goats of this breed has increased and today has about 2,200 heads. This rare shooting is a spectacle as epic and frightening as it is beautiful. Leopards lead a solitary lifestyle and are usually happy to meet a relative only during the breeding season but the boundaries of the territory still need to be established. Sometimes you have to use force to do this. This leopard decided that he could tear off a piece of his kinsman's hunting grounds and appropriate them for himself, but he underestimated the opponent. The other leopard turned out to be no less agile, large, and most importantly, fierce. The confrontation of these cats is especially impressive because you understand, this is not all graphics and not staging, but the real life of wild animals that show phenomenal strength in the struggle for survival. In a fight with each other, the leopard is able to show the whole arsenal of the coolest techniques. First of all, he uses powerful paw strikes. The leopard swoops down on the opponent and tries to overwhelm him, to subdue him. The blow turns into a fight. Each cat tries to avoid the bite of the enemy and at the same time, to reach the enemy with its own fangs. Predators understand each other's strength, so they try to act on this in a big way. They push each other off the slope, try to throw them into the thicket. In general, they do everything to gain an advantage, at least for one second. Then the leopard will be able to take advantage of the situation and defeat the enemy. If the battle turns into a close distance, leopards use not only their forelegs, but also their hind legs. They are a bit like domestic cats who arrange their fights. Thus, just leopards are several dozens times more massive, and every blow from a wild predator's paw leaves traces on the metal. It seems that these cats are real masters of martial arts. They move so fast that it is difficult to follow their movements. But when slowing down, real fighting techniques and feints become noticeable. It's like the leopards watched old movies with Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee, and then decided to bring the coolest scenes into life. Just look at how the leopard jumps on the opponent to hit him with all four limbs at once. Having thrown off the enemy, he rushes at him again, but is already trying to reach him with his fangs. But the second cat does not remain in debt, it throws the aggressor through itself. Just like according to the textbook, you capture, roll in yourself, and a powerful push so that nobody flew over its back. What a reception. Interestingly enough, in a fight with a relative, the leopard demonstrates restraint and nobility. The exchange of blows ends with the cats stopping and dispersing. Then they come together again for a fight, but at the same time, they do not try to pounce on the opponent's back and grab at the throat. Pay attention, although leopards fight desperately, they do not use flighting techniques and do not even aim at each other's eyes. Yeah, they will fight for territory, but it seems that there are boundaries that these predators try not to cross, even in the fight with rivals. As a result, despite the fact that the leopards are fighting in full force, they are alive after the opponent's duel. Moreover, they even managed to avoid serious injuries. Worthy of respect, don't you agree? In the wild, there is serious competition between different types of cats. They compete with each other for food. Although each species has its own preferences in choosing prey, the menu of large predators is at least a little but the same. Lions are the most aggressive to rivals, but leopards do not miss an opportunity to drive a predator of another species from their territory, or even eat it. This leads to very dramatic events. For example, you can see what will happen if the lioness discovers the lair of leopards. While the mother hunts to bring food to the kittens, the babies are defenseless. 
they can only freeze in the hope that their camouflage color will save them. Unfortunately, it didn't help. The lioness found them. For them, leopardkins are not relatives, but lunch. But if you think that a spotted predator remains in debt to such aggressors, then you don't really know the character at all. In general, the desire for revenge is considered a very complex emotion. In order to feel something like this, you need to be well aware of the cause and effect relationships and understand the emotional damage that can be inflicted on the enemy. So many scientists are unlikely to agree that the leopard is capable of deliberate revenge. What do you think? After all, we don't know what the cat feels, but we do know the consequences of her actions. She is purposefully looking for a den of lions, and this despite the fact that the leopard is seriously at risk. Unlike her, lionesses live in a groups and take care not only of their own babies, but also of the kittens of their sisters and cousins. Even if the mother is not near the cubs, chances are high that there will be other females there. But that doesn't stop the leopard. He finds the lion cubs and does with them the same thing that the lioness did with the leopard babies. Such is the vendetta. Two spotted African big cats, the cheetah and leopard, often feud. Although their coloring is similar, when these animals are standing next to each other, it is simply impossible to confuse them. The cheetah is a much slimmer and leaner animal. Relative to the size of the body, it has a small head and long paws. The spots are solid. Two solid black stripes run from the eyes to the mouth. An adult leopard is much larger. It has a powerful neck, larger jaws. The paws are shorter relative to the body, but stronger, and the spots have the appearance of empty sockets. Besides, these cats aren't even close relatives. The leopard refers to panthers, that is, to large cats. Its closest relatives are the lion, tiger, jaguar, and snow leopard. The cheetah, although slightly inferior to the leopard in body's length, belongs to small cats, and its closest relative is, oddly enough, the American cougar. Cheetah is the fastest runner on the planet, which reaches a speed of about 70 miles per hour, 110 kilometers per hour. He sneaks up on his victim and then begins a short chase. Although the cheetah is not able to run for long at the peak of its capabilities, it manages to cover quite a long distance. It usually hunts in an open area where it is most convenient to run. The cheetah does not climb trees since its claws, for the sake of better grip at the ground, are retracted much worse than those of other cats. The leopard prefers ambushes and rarely chases prey. He relies on agility and strength where the cheetah relies on speed. Therefore, in addition to differences in their favorite habitats, these cats also differ in taste preferences. Cheetahs hunt relatively small and fast ungulates, especially in pallets. Although a cheetah can defeat a zebra or wildebeest, it is much more difficult to hunt such strong rivals. Leopards can hunt not only zebras, but also buffaloes. However, such a predator will be able to catch an impala only on condition that the first jump will be crowned with success. It seems that such different predators should not compete with each other. But in fact, they still intersect. And then a real competitive struggle can begin, against which the confrontation between Apple and Android will seem like a dispute in the sandbox. The leopard is waiting for the cheetah to do the same with him as the impala. Who are you rooting for? Do you hope that the cheetah will have time to dodge? Or do you wish good luck to the leopard? One step, one more. The cheetah is unaware of the danger. Just a little more, and the leopard will pounce on its enemy. But the cheetah at the last moment manages to notice a larger cat and breaks into a run with lightning speed. The leopard realized that he was noticed and rushes in pursuit. His claws are about to hook and overwhelm the cheetah, but no. The fastest mammal on the planet justifies its chidal and escapes from the threat. As you understand, such cases are not uncommon. Therefore, it is not surprising that cheetahs are trying to deal with the young leopards at the first opportunity. So to speak, they work for the future. After all, while the leopard is young and small, it will still be possible to cope with it. If he grows up, then not anymore. 
the victim and the stalker switched places. Only the cheetah underestimated the agility of the young leopard. He managed to turn right on the run in such a way that the faster predator flew past. The pursuit continued, but we know the ideal rescue option for a young leopard is to find a tree. In its crown, the cheetah will not be able to catch the enemy. Leopards are well-known loners, whereas cheetahs in recent decades have increasingly begun to unite into small groups and clans. What happens if one leopard meets two cheetahs on a narrow path? Something unexpected. You see how the leopard noticed that he was surrounded and immediately falls on his back. When two dogs compete, the weaker one lies down and shows the strong one his stomach. He gives up. But if you think that a leopard shows with a similar gesture that it obeys cheetahs, then you really underestimate this cruel and strong predator. In fact, lying on your back is a panther tactic in a battle with numerically superior enemy forces. Thus, the leopard is ready to fight off one cheetah with its front paws and the second with its hind paws. He is taking a risk because his stomach is really in a vulnerable position, but the cheetahs did not dare to attack. To run into the sharp, crescent-shaped claws of a leopard, how to get hit by dozens of daggers at the same time. Here, two cheetahs tracked down by a leopard. But they underestimated who they got in touch with. This is not a teenager, but an adult and experienced male. When the two cheetahs approached him, he showed no fear and continued calmly going about his business. The cheetahs clearly do not understand what is happening and are trying to come at him from both sides to attack. Well, it's your fault. The leopard turned around and was the first to go into battle against two cheetahs at once. That's when they realized what kind of trouble they were in. Only super speed saved them from a serious beating. There is another quality of the leopard that should not be underestimated. This is prudence. Here the leopard is attacked by a female cheetah. Actually, these are already adult animals, and the leopard has an advantage in pure physical strength. But he knows there is a cheetah's lair nearby where the kittens are. The leopard understands with what fury the female will fight for them and for her territory, so he retreats without a fight. A wise move. After all, even if the leopard had won, the unpredictable female would certainly have managed to injure him. Underestimate the cunning of the leopard is also not worth it. It turns out that this predator is capable of real multi-way plans. Look at him sneaking up on a herd of African buffaloes. The weight of individual mature males of these ungulates can reach a ton. The leopard is about 12 times lighter. The predator has almost no chance to cope with the horned aggressive giants, and even when there are so many of them. Suddenly you notice a lion in the background. Do you think it's an accident? or that the lion came to fight with its spotted cousin. No, in fact, it is just the lions that can cope with buffaloes. They cause panic in the herd and begin an epic chase. This is one of the few cases when males take an active part in hunting. Usually lionesses are engaged in foraging as males have a large mane, which prevents them from disguising themselves. But against giants like buffaloes or rhinos, their enormous strength is needed. And when the lion is noticed, it only plays into the pride's hands. So panic among the ungulates will begin faster. The predator's plan works, the buffaloes break forward, and the pursuit begins. The lions choose a weak individual to fight it off from the rest. But that's a completely different story. We are interested in what the leopard is doing in all this farce. It turned out that he took advantage of the situation to his advantage. The panic in the herd of buffaloes led to the fact that the young calf flagged behind his parents and decided to hide in the bushes. The lions didn't notice him there and got carried away hunting, but the leopards seemed to be deliberately looking for such a victim. In the dense thickets, he attacked a young bull and managed to bring him down, and then into to get to the throat. That's how the leopard practically used the lions to his advantage and was able to catch a calf that he would never have gotten to if he had been guarded by other bulls. 
How do you like such a multipass? When a whole group of adult bulls walks through the forest, they feel quite confident there. There are too many of them for a lone predator to dare to attack, and thickets from different sides will not allow hyenas or lions to surround a group of herbivores. Well, their confidence in their abilities was superfluous. They obviously didn't know who lived in the forest. The leopard is so brave that he can dare to attack a whole group of buffaloes. Each of the horned beasts far surpasses the leopard in strength and mass. However, they are all the more dangerous for a spotted predator, but he's attacking anyway. It looks like he has an adrenaline addiction. And although the buffaloes are escaping this time, sooner or later, the leopard will have time to strangle one of the ungulates, so they should change the route. 